Hey, everybody, and welcome aboard to another Security Professionals Business Roundtable uh, through HL Flake. My name is Chad Lingefeld. I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina uh, with LockDoc Security, and we're excited today to have another fun conversation um, uh, relating to business. And today it's really going to be talking all about core values. And this is something that, you know, we've, a lot of us have talked about um, over the last couple of months on some of our daily business calls, but core values are something that can really revolutionize your business if you, uh, if you, if you grab a hold of them and implement them. And so we're going to be talking about that. We've got some uh, fun guests with us today with Travis Howell. How are you doing, Travis? Good, Chad, good to see you. And also, Will. Will, introduce yourself to everybody that's never met you before. What's happening? I'm Will Killerick Bowles. I am in the Nashville, Tennessee area. I am an avid consumer of dad jokes, and I've rarely ever met a stranger. <laughs> Will, uh, I don't even remember exactly how, how did you find out about our business meeting? Um, I believe it was through our good buddy, Rob Cadman, which, you know, maybe we shouldn't claim him as a friend. Yeah. Um, but Rob, I think, so right as all the COVID situation hit, I think I saw Rob like a post of yours on LinkedIn about the business meeting that you had put together. And I decided to join in on it. And again, as somebody who's rarely ever met a stranger, you know, I've really enjoyed getting to know the group that we've sat in with over the last, gosh, it's been four months, five months now. Yeah, it's it has been it's been a, a, a I guess we started uh, at the end of March, so yeah, yeah. Co coming up on four months. So I, again, the power of social media and the power of connecting. Uh, but you've been a really uh, one a, a a great positive energy uh, through conversation, and two, just uh, a lot of information that you've been sharing over the last couple of months, which is. Actually, one of the reasons why uh, we thought about you today for the conversation about core values, because uh, the company that you work with, Provincia, does a really good job at, one, implementing them and discussing them. So uh, we appreciate you being here today from Tennessee. Obviously, travel. Travis is, uh, is down in Houston. Travis, how's it going with you? Good, good. And just to introduce myself in case um, you haven't met me, I'm the marketing manager for HL Flake and International Key Supply, McDonald Dash, A.T. Mitchell, you know, basically our whole family of companies. But, but yeah, I'm based here in Houston, um, and I'm in the office today. Very cool. You know, Travis, you guys got have so many different business names now. It seems like it's almost time to kind of sum those all up in one one name. Uh, we do have a name that's coming soon. <laughs> we, uh, we have a name picked out. We have branding that we're working on, and um, we're working on a, a virtual trade show that uh, will actually be under that brand name. So very cool. That's a, coming ex soon. Yeah, exciting stuff there. Well, good, guys, I'm glad that we're able to uh, kind of get together today. We're live right now. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, um, leave a comment uh, below where you're watching from, uh, name of your business, uh, shout out. But uh, today's going to be talking about core values. A couple of questions I want to have, and uh, because I know Will has been part of this conversation as well, but uh, just just to kind of set the table, and Travis did a really good job with product placement and has his core values right above his shoulder. Will, what's your excuse? I mean, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the locked out green is great, but yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'll. I'll say that the lock dot green and the provincial red may have looked a little Christmassy and I didn't want to get, you know, totally out of season. Um, Christmas in July, I think is still a thing, but we'll, uh, we'll just call it that. There you go. Okay. So um, core values, let's just like kind of define them because I think we would probably all agree that a lot of times people use core values or maybe throw them around as a buzzword and maybe it's, you know, maybe maybe it's been diluted over time. So, Travis, how do you see core values from a definition perspective and from a from a, a how it actually makes sense in the business and why it's important, I guess? Well, I think with any company, you know, you're trying to work with some number of people, some group of people, and that can always be like herding cats to some degree. So, you know, one thing is core values really help to start a line um, within the business, some main 
core things that the business will focus on and that um, you know each individual employee in their individual role can relate back to those, those values that are set by the company. Um, so it really just helps to bring everybody together and align them uh, around common goals and common values. Cool. Will, how do you see core values from a definition perspective and, and application in, in your guys' business? You know, I think core values are something that first and foremost, from a, from a professional standpoint, have to align with your personal belief structure. Um, I believe if your company's core values don't sit well with what you personally believe, then it, you just aren't going to be a good culture fit for the company you work with. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but when you can find a company who has a set of core values that align very well with what you personally believe in, you know, that that helps build sort of a no brainer, very strong relationship uh, to continue doing business. And then you just get to operate sort of under the confines of what you already believe in. So I think it's incredibly powerful when you can find that type of uh, relationship. So I've done a lot of. I guess, research and application on core values for uh, even through our business. And one of the easiest things that I have applied this to, and I heard um, uh, someone say his name was Alex Judd. He said that core values are a predetermined set of decisions. Mm -hmm. And it really has stuck with me Uh, through, through conversations I had with him. It really was eye opening because in the, in the business world, and we've, we were talking about this the other day on uh, one of our team meetings is throughout the day, th- throughout the day in any given individual, you're going to make a number of decisions. You're, you have to make a number of ch- choices, right? And a lot of times it can be like, okay, what is that? What does that mean? Where do I need to go? And when you already have kind of a predetermined set of decisions that you can pl- apply it's very, very helpful. And so I think that's really an interesting definition or a way to look at it from, uh, from that standpoint. So with that, uh, I, Travis, I see you have some back there. What, how do you see the core values being implemented in, in your organization? Say that one more time. How do you see, how do you see the, um, how do you see core values being implemented into your organization? So, um, I mean, they're, they're discussed a lot. And actually what we've done is in order to keep them in front of people, we've throughout the building at all of our facilities, uh, we've put up signage so that they're a constant reminder. Um, and then also, so that's not only for, for our internal team. We also like that our customers and our vendors that come in, they also see the values that we've put Put in place, and that we're you know that we're putting into the business. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm going to show a few pictures. Awesome. So we have throughout. So this is our conference room. You know, and then at the time clock, just above the time clock, we have a sign that's a, a good reminder. Um, in our will call pickup area. Um, We have a a sign that, you know, then it's more customer facing. And then also in our our, uh, break room for employees. There's reminders kind of throughout the building um, of these core values. But then also this becomes part of our conversation when we do goal setting. Um, And we have our employee review process. Part of that employee review process is, you know, how do the actions um, and the growth of the employee line up with the core values that the business has set forth. So you're really using them for one, you got to have them visible, but two, you're using them to help make those decisions, how to implement those goals, how to, how to review, uh, I guess, uh, activity or behavioral type exercises, performance review type things in association with those. Right. And then we also have uh, an internal social media network that's, hmm. It's through our um, our HR app that we use for you know clocking in, clocking out, managing payroll. Uh, they have a built-in community section, and we can give each other badges within the business that line up with our core values. So, you know, when when we see our team members do something that line up with the values, we can basically comment on that and give them a badge. 
So that's very cool. Uh, we we yeah. uh, we tried to attempt something at one point in time, and uh, I, we we struggled with execution on it. But uh, utilizing keys, we had some keys engraved with our core values to hand them out when we saw people. Uh, exemplifying them um, and utilize that as a shout out in a team meeting. So, but yeah, I like that idea. The badges, it, you, keeping that as a kind of consistent reminder or uh, reinforcing that those behaviors are the things that need to happen. Will, I know you guys at Provincia are are very, I guess, unique in the way that you uh, share your core values. How how have those been applied to you, and how have you how have you kind of utilized them or seen them being implemented in the organization? So a lot like what Travis was saying, we've got signage and things posted around in conference rooms and offices and the warehouse. Um, we do uh, quarterly review meetings of everything that's happened in the previous quarter and then talk about what we're planning on for the upcoming quarter. And a lot of our, uh, you know, certainly hiring and firing happens around the core values. Um, incentive, incentives for employees happen around the core values. And, yeah, I mean, they're, they're very forward facing. I think, um, you know, basically everybody in our organization could state our core values from memory, which I think is really cool because initially when we set them up, they were just a bunch of kind of buzzwords, mm -hmm. um, you know, integrity and friendliness and fun and that kind of stuff. Like nobody really, it doesn't stick with you. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Um, but now we've got a really interesting set of core values. I'm sure we'll get into it here a little bit later. Um, but everybody knows them, you know, so it's, there's no question about what they are. There's no question about what they mean. And because of that, there's no question about what our overall mission is as a company. And that's incredibly helpful when you're trying to put an organization together of, you know, a bunch of individuals that wouldn't otherwise necessarily know each other, but because we all work together, because we're all we're all achieving a common goal. Um, we've got to have the same focus in mind. And so because of our core values being very forward facing, uh, there's just no question about what that is, what that goal is, so how to handle it too. Yeah. So Travis, uh, I, I want to ask this question because Will brings up a very, very valid point when it comes to, uh, to buzzwords, because that's something that I, I, through conversations that we've had, a lot of people that say that, you know, they're just buzzwords. Nobody pays attention to them. You know, they're just, they're just a corporate thing that people institute and then we move on. Why, how, how, how do you make that different? How do you actually get them to be an active part of your culture and environment versus just being buzzwords? Well, I think it's by just having it part of the conversation um, that we have within the business all the time and really recognizing when somebody is exemplifying those core values. So, it, you know, it is something that we have to continue to bring up mm -hmm. um, in order to encourage people to one, remember the values and also remember how to, or see examples of how to apply them. So, you know, as Will was mentioning in your quarterly meetings, you know, we have a quarterly town hall. Usually we'll review the core values there, but we'll also try to, um, tell a story about how somebody in the business lived up to that core value. Um, so that's usually a good reminder. You pick out one or two people or one or two in instances and talk about how it matched up. But yeah, I mean, you can certainly, I mean, we have, um, you know, I don't know if we'll, we'll talk about specific, the core, the specific core values we have, but yeah, I mean, as you go through them, some of them can sound like uh, buzzwords, and there's probably a few here that are on everybody's core values. You know, integrity, you know, that might be on everybody's core value. Integrity and respect or some version of respect. Um, so yeah. I, let, me, let me ask this question. When it comes to, when it comes to working on the, the core values or actually, you know, displaying them like you've got on the wall behind you and what will will's going to share a story in a little bit about their core values because it's very portable uh and it and it will really stick with you but from from an aspect of actually working on documenting them how important is it to document them and have them visible because i can tell you for years in our organization we worked off of 
an assumptive nature that people knew what our values were, but they were never defined in a certain way. So how do you guys see that to where do you, how do you have you have you been in an organization before that they weren't documented or weren't defined well and they were just assumed versus being in an organization where they're constantly being reinforced and constantly being shared yeah i i definitely have um and and not even that it was a bad thing i think it was just most people it, it wasn't part of the conversation it wasn't part of the organizational structure and because of that I guess if I look back on it, there were some people that were still very company people. You know, they were going to do everything the right way, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And they probably just had a good moral fabric built into them. Mm -hmm. um, there were other people there that would get by and do the minimum. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not that they were, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, and we're certainly not mentioning any names here, but I, I can I can think back to um, times where people would just kind of do whatever they needed to do that benefited them at that moment. And maybe it wasn't necessarily against the company, but it certainly wasn't for the company, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, so in contrast, you know, being a part of an organization that has those clearly defined, it's, it's sort of freeing, right? Like, cause just like you said earlier, Chad, core values as a predetermined set of decisions, those big decisions are made for us. Mm -hmm. And now I have to align my day-to-day -day actions with those decisions to make sure that I'm living up to what our company stands for. And it's, it's helpful. <laughs> you know, if you, if you have a question, it's sort of like the old, uh, you know, remember the WWJD bracelets that everybody wore in the late nineties. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that like sort of mindset in the back of the head. And so our, our owner, his name is Aaron, Aaron Whitaker. And I think about this all the time is WWAD. What would Aaron do? <laughs> and um, it's sort of silly, sort of goofy, but at the same time, you know, he's, he's done it the right way for a long time. And it's helpful for me to frame a question in my head. Well, what would Aaron do? And then it's sort of the answer is already there. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Travis? Is the, the, the difference between working into a, a business where there's an assumptive thought of what should be or shouldn't be as part of as part of the value structure versus once they're actually documented and defined. So this is the first company I've worked for where there is a defined core value. Okay. You know, and I've been with HL Flake for nine years now. And, um, you know, previously when it was Dan was the sole owner, we really didn't have core values in the business. We've only had core, core values for about two years. Um, you know, prior to that, I would say that there was kind of an unspoken value and it was generally just the golden rule, you know, treat others as you would be treated. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the one value in, but this helps us, you know, certainly when we think about, you know, one of our core values is servancy, which you may say, is that a real word? <laughs> because it's, um, it's actually a, a this uh, Mark Knight, our CEO, this is a word that he came up with that, you know, combined servant with advocacy really speaks to being a customer advocate. And that's something that, you know, maybe while that was kind of in the back of people's minds in the business, it wasn't at the forefront. It wasn't something that we um, talked actively about and something that we built goals around. So, you know, it's a clear difference now having these core values that we can kind of then build our goals off of and build some of our initiatives around living up to these values. So you said that's servancy, right? Servancy. Yeah. That's, I like that. So Travis, you're, you're sitting in front of your list of core values. What do you want to go ahead and share kind of what you guys have, have documented as, as your values? Yeah. So hopefully this gives you a little better close up look, but, um, so the way these came about too is, you know, when Mark Knight came into the business about two years ago, um, he started the conversation about us needing to develop core values. And so within the extended leadership team, uh, we had several meetings um, to bring these together. And really we had a much longer list. We wanted to narrow it down to five. So he came into that meeting saying, there's two that have to be on here, integrity and respect. You know, these have to be part of our core values. And then after that, we, you know, we um, had a lot of discussion to come up with what 
among our group, what we felt were the values that, that we really wanted to own. Um, and so, you know, integrity and respect are, are two kind of givens and then servancy, which I kind of spoke to is really around being not just a customer advocate, but being a servant, you know, within the business to other people in the business, um, being willing to be a servant for our vendors. But again, it's that mix between being a servant, but also being an advocate and thinking of what is, you know, what is in their best interest instead of necessarily what's our best interest. Um, and then, you know, I really like the last two are probably my favorite, which is courage and curiosity. And those two things kind of go hand in hand. You know, if you're curious, then you need to step out and kind of get out of your comfort zone and be courageous in order to make things happen. So, um, and then we've actually added one more that's not on this list. And that's because uh, when we merged with International Key Supply, um, those guys are, are based in Farmingdale, New York, you know, so they're New Yorkers. So they brought something else to our business that we don't, we didn't necessarily have as part of, certainly not part of our core values. And that was, they brought their New York tenacity. Mm. So our last core value is tenacity. Mm. Uh, so we're actually needing to make new signage. <laughs> <laughs> um, time, time for a refresh. I'm sure all of the, the folks in the marketing world are really struggling with the fact now we get to get new signage, right? <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, and that's something we, we recognized in that, because I don't know that International Key Supply had, you know, written core values, mm -hmm. but just in interacting with the, the mm -hmm. people from International Key Supply, we, you know, that we see the tenacity that they have. They're not going to give up. Um, they're not going to just take no for an answer quickly. Um, and that's starting to rub off on us, hopefully. That's, I think that's part of the, the culture, right? So um, there's, a, there's, there's a, the, a guy that wrote a book about culture, and he kind of defines that as the, a culture is a combined group's um, beliefs, behaviors, and values. And so at the end of the day, that's when you start to look at any organization, you, you know, a business or a family or, you know, whatever organization it is, they're going to have some type of a culture around it. And it's going to be made up of the behaviors that they operate under, the beliefs that they all current, that they all have that are uh, in agreement, and then the values that they all share. And so you see that when, with a company like that, they bring that tenacity and you're like, hey, every single one of them, it may not even, it may be the culture that they just come from, but it's a value add. And so you know, that's something that you can work on. Here's my question for you, Travis. So you said you just applied them within the last two years. Um, and you'd been there for you've been there for nine years. So seven years without core values, or maybe an assumptive core value structure, two years with what's the difference of the organization? Yeah, I mean, I think it also goes back to I mean, we have core values that we're all now working under. And we also have common goals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've said that already. But um, you know, really, it's just having a sing singular vision and then having these beliefs that we can go back to as something that we want to live up to, these values that we want to live up to. Um, you know, I think it's definitely helped motivate everybody in the, biz in the business. Um, we feel like there's growth opportunity for all of us. Um, Part of that is, you know, because we do see that there's uh, these common values that we all have that we're all striving to live up to. Do you think that it has kind of put you all in a in a more uh, consistent mind mind frame? I mean, uh, the 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 phrase "all on the same page" is it? Do you see the little bit more unity associated with it? Yeah, and there's certainly there's a lot more communication, and part of that is there's other things that have been put in structure, other structures that are put in place or just more communication. Yeah. Um, but, you know, whereas years ago, we never had town hall meetings. Now we do have town hall meetings and just being able to share um, successes within the business, um, you know, not necessarily revenue based successes, but, you know, small successes that individual people have that line up with our core values. It does help us to feel um, like a family that's you know, working towards one common goal. Very cool. So I want to, I'll jump to an extreme. So, so uh, 
your your set of core values. You've got five or six, I guess, that you have now. So uh, you've you've got a, a specific list, and I'm I want to come to Will in just a second because I think that they have three, and and it's very por- four, very very portable, um, and it, it's in, in a story form. Uh, to to an extreme, we have eight in our organization, uh, and be, mostly because we can't do anything. Uh, it, it, we have to we have to. Yeah, add a bunch of extra words to everything. Uh, but anyway, the, the the first one is defining expectations. And when we were kind of working through it, it was a it was an understanding of, you know what, even in the sense of having core values, we had never documented or defined them before. And so we wanted to put that as like kind of number one, set it, set it at the front. We in order to have good core values, one, they need to be defined and things need to be documented. So defining our expectations, consistent communication cultivating trust um, and the way that it kind of works in in our core value list is it's they build upon each other so if you can define your expectations and communicate them consistently then you will cultivate trust with your team and with your customers um, then we say we want to show outrageous kindness we want to treat others better than we treat ourselves uh, courageous honesty addressing issues early and often don't keep things don't hide things from people or, or keep people in the dark that will affect them Refined quality is one of our core values, along with unexpected cleanliness. And then we tie a bow on it with intentional execution. Define what winning looks like and don't give up until it's finished. So we kind of bookend that, defining the expectations up front and then throwing some execution around it at the very end. Um, and we that is something from a rhythm standpoint, very much like what you guys say, uh, you know, consistently communicating that with something that we share every week uh, with our organization and we we apply them and highlight when they are uh, exemplified on a weekly basis. So you've got six, eight, now four in a story form. So we'll share the core values of Provincia the way that you guys communicate them. So I'll give you the core values and then I'll tell you the stories behind them. Our core values are 3.30 on Friday, point out the hole, shoot the gun, and go ahead, sleep in. So um, in 2017, we joined a business coaching platform that, um, you know, without getting too deep into it, it helped redefine, redefine Preventia. Um, it changed a lot of our focus and a lot of our drive, and it really did get everyone on the same page. Um, a big part of like one of the very first, maybe the second meetings we had was to build our core values or to, to, you know, build them out better. Cause again, like I mentioned before, they were buzzwords. It was fun and integrity and, and these kinds of things that Travis, I think you said this earlier. I, I think most people have these, these items in their list of core values, whether they're communicated or not but no one in our company could remember them. And anytime before we were in this business coaching platform, we would always have, you know, probably an annual company meeting. And it was always a contest to see who could list off our seven core values that we had on this list. There's one guy, Dustin Davis, he's still with us. And he's one of the best technicians we had. Dustin had them memorized, maybe tattooed. I'm not sure. (laughs) Dustin was the only one that could, could remember these seven core values from memory, including Aaron, our owner. Aaron could not remember them without looking. So in, in sitting in this, this coaching meeting, they said, we're going to redevelop your core values and we're going to do it in the form of telling stories. How we're going to figure them out is we're going to imagine a scenario where we're sending the best people from your company to go colonize a new planet. And you've left the, the earth, you've left the world, and you've traveled on to a new planet. And after you arrive, you find that there are already people there. And so to tell these people who you are, you've got to tell the stories about Provincia. What are these iconic company stories that everyone should know that define who you are? And there was a, a group of a, probably about eight, maybe 10 of us in the room that day. And we all sat down and for 20 minutes or so wrote out three to five stories each about what is Provincia, who is Provincia. And what it came to was telling a bunch of stories, like I mentioned here. So 3.30 on Friday was an early 
story from when we were a company of about, it was actually before my time. I, I believe we had about eight employees total. Um, there was a customer who had an installation scheduled and it got lost on our calendar somehow. We, we had screwed something up internally and he called in at about noon on Friday and said, hey, you guys are supposed to be here this morning. I don't know where they are. I, I haven't heard from anyone. I'm leaving town tomorrow morning and I need this installation taken care of before I leave. Um, so Brad, who had, he's our general manager now, second in command, he had just stepped out of the field to become the technician manager. Brad said, we're, we're so sorry, we'll take care of it, no problem. Um, and he started packing up a box and a van to go out to this guy's house. And he showed up at about 2.30, 3 o'clock to get the installation started. And he sent a text message to all of our other technicians as he was headed there to say, here's the story. We've got a, an installation we need to take care of today. Here's the address. I'm going to be there. I'd appreciate any help I could get. He was probably by himself looking at about a four to five hour installation. Um, sure enough, by around 3.30 on Friday, the rest of our technician team had finished their days and had showed up to help Brad. My understanding is they were finished by about 5 p.m. and they got the installation taken care of. Our customer was happy. And it's a story that we had told for years about everybody showing up at 3.30 on Friday. That's teamwork. That's that's people coming together to help one another for a common goal. Okay. Um, point out the hole is, is another really great story. So we had two technicians at a residential installation. We were installing some, some cameras. And um, one of our technicians was in the attic drilling penetrations to install some cameras around the, the top level of the house. And accidentally drilled through a portion of the roof small hole drill hole you know three quarters of an inch nothing major but it was a, a hole in the roof that wasn't supposed to be there we had another technician in the crawl space pulling wire um, our technician in the attic went right to the customer he didn't go to his other cohort to you know ask what to do or get scared about it he went right to the customer and he said, ma'am, I, I want to let you know, as we were upstairs in the attic working, I drilled a small hole through the roof accidentally. Um, he had actually done some roofing work in the past and told her, he said, listen, I can fix this on my own. I, I've done this a, a good bit. Um, I can assure you, if you're not comfortable with that, our company will take care of it. We'll hire a roofing company or you can hire a roofing company. We'll take care of the bill. No problem. And she looked at him, just started laughing. She said, honey, my, my husband's a roofing contractor. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so sort of the best case scenario there but that's integrity that's that's doing the right thing even when no one else is looking mm -hmm. because it's it's something that is minor that likely wouldn't have caused a big you know a big deal but it was it was a mistake and we pointed out the hole before it became anything more than it had to be uh the next shoot the gun this was another interesting story. Actually, the same two technicians that were on the point the whole job were involved with this. So we had some guys, I believe it was probably a Friday, maybe sometime around 3.30 if I had to guess. And they were at an installation, another residential installation. And once they finished up, the guy was like, man, you guys have been just awesome. Like, are you done for the day? Can, can we hang out? I've, I've got some land out back of the house. We can go shoot some guns. And they're like, well, yeah, sure. So they clocked out, they hopped on the ATV, they rode out there and they started shooting guns at the guy. And, you know, that in, in especially rural Tennessee, that's something a lot of people do for fun. So this is fun. This is again, teamwork. This is, um, you know, just it's shoot the gun, right? Like it's, it's love what you do and do what you love. And then, so we had those three teamwork, integrity, and fun in the form of those stories. And it took us about a year to come up with, we felt like there was a, a core value about communication that was missing. And so we had been hosting these business coaching events at a, uh, a few different hotels near our office in Columbia, Tennessee, in the conference rooms. And so 
we do uh, a good bit of fire alarm installations for hotels. And one of the hotels we had just finished up was a sleep in, if you're familiar with that, that brand. Um, so the sleep in had just opened and we were hosting our next meeting about six weeks later there, sort of giving back to the, the job that had given to us a little bit. And the owner of the hotel came in and asked for one of our technicians, RJ, who had been the lead on that installation and sort of pulled RJ off to the side during one of our breaks and said, Hey man, how's your mom? How are things going? This, that, and the other. No one else on the team even knew that RJ had, that his mom had recently had surgery, but RJ had developed such a strong relationship through his communication with the ownership group of this hotel that they took time out of their day to seek him out, connect with him and check on his mom to make sure she was okay. And our, our coach was in the room as this happened and the whole team was in the room. We were just coming back from lunch. Um, and he was sitting there sort of watching from the sidelines, dumbfounded. And as everybody gathered back together, JT, he said, guys, I don't know if you just noticed what happened, but we have the story about communication for your, your fourth core value. And it took us a little bit to come up with the name because we wanted to be sort of catchy, but go ahead, sleep in tells the story of what happened with RJ's relationship with the ownership group at the sleep in and his supreme communication that led to this story sort of unfolding itself in front of all of us. So again, to, to recap, we've got three 30 on Friday, which is about teamwork. We've got point out the hole, which is about integrity. We've got shoot the gun, which is about having fun. And we've got go ahead, sleep in, which is about communication. And those four stories, those four sort of monikers really tell the story about who Preventia is. And I, I just, I don't know if you see me smiling as I'm telling it, because I just get a kick out of telling these stories. It's, it's a lot of fun. But it's it's incredible. And, and I've heard that story several times now, and it's always, yeah, I, I've almost memorized all your core values for your company because <laughs> of it, because it's just an engaging story and it understands it helps you to understand what you're really about. Um, and it's it's really cool to kind of see that in action, and it brings you in, it draws you in, and it makes you feel you're, like you're a part of the organization and part of the team, and you know exactly yeah. how to execute on things, um, which really kind of goes back to even what we were saying at the very beginning about, um, uh, about it's a predetermined set of, de of decisions. Uh, we've often said around our organization it's uh, a filter to make decisions by. And that's exactly what you've given is a filter for people to make decisions by if they're out by themselves on a job site and the question comes up of, should I go have fun with this customer? Answer is yes. <laughs> you know, uh, the, at the yeah. end of the day, hey, do I need to call and ask for help? Yes, we, we have teamwork. Yeah. And so it's just really kind of helping those decisions be predetermined. Thank you very much for sharing those, Will. Here's Absolutely. My, here's my question. Uh, that I'll kind of pose to, and you kind of even talked about it, Will, through your, through the process of working with a coach to do this. Uh, but so I, I want to kind of toss this to Travis a little bit and maybe kind of walk through the process by which uh, when Mark came into the organization and you guys started to talk about building core values, what was that process like? Because I'm just imagining I'm sitting here watching this video. I'm a business owner. I'm a business leader. And I'm going, OK, yeah, that all sounds great. Where do I start? Yeah, so, you know, like, like I said, we got a, our group of the extended leader team together. And really, we knew, since we knew the first two were set, we really just focused on what we're going to be the next three, because we wanted, to, we wanted to stop at five. Of course, we've added one more, but, you know. Um, and so, we talked about, among the group, we had at least, I think we had a list of about eight or so. Um, you know, diversity was one of the other ones. Um, I can't think of all the, all the ones that dropped off. Um, you know, not that those things were not important to the business. It's just what is it that we, um, as a group, wanted to focus on and things that we all were already doing. You know, I think it's great, Will, how rather than using the name teamwork, you used a story title help people remember that story. 
as you were saying that, I could think of a few uh, stories that I know of, some that happened before I was even here, um, that go around the idea of servancy or customer advocacy. And I think it was, you know, we knew that was the next one that we came up with was that customer advocacy core value because there were lots of stories within our extended leader group about um, people that went above and beyond, went out of their way to, to deliver for the customer. There's one in particular that I can remember, and this is long, long ago before I was even here, um, when Dan was the sole owner of the business, uh, his son, Jeff, there was some type of mix up with a customer and they needed, this was a customer that's in Austin. And they needed that item and they needed it as soon as possible. So he just hopped in the car and drove, drove over there and, and delivered it to him. There's one other story, and I don't know all the details on this one, but there is a similar story uh, where this customer was further away and Jeff actually just bought a plane ticket that day, got on the plane with the hardware in his hands and flew to the customer <laughs> and handed it to them at the job site. So it that was is awesome. A mistake that you know we had made and, and that was an action that they took to make it right. So there were stories like that within the business. So it was definitely, you know, customer advocacy had to be. You know, I've, I've always said that even the best companies out there are not immune from mistakes. What sets them apart is how they handle those moving forward, how they make it right initially and how they take the steps to ensure it doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. And that I truly believe is how the best companies separate themselves from, from the others. Um, you know, to kind of, to piggyback on what you're saying there, Travis, the stories sort of help build the folklore of the company yeah. and it, it sort of uh, reinforces longevity. I mean, if you think about a company, so Preventure, for example, we've been around for, it'll be 10 years coming up here in a month. That's a long time in the day-to-day, -day, that's a very short period of time in the scope of the world. Mm -hmm. um, what we're building with those core values is longevity. And I, I think that's so cool. It's really neat to be a part of the other three stories <laughs> were actually stories from very, very early on when the company was smaller, when the company, um, you know, when every, all the information traveled more easily in between everyone. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm excited that I got to be a part directly of at least one of those core values. That's really neat. Yeah. And then, so for us, I think the last two that we have, courage and curiosity, we know that as a business, we have to be innovative. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was the main drive. We know that we have to, in order um, to stay relevant and stay out in front of the competition, um, you have to have the courage and the curiosity to, to grow. And um, so, yeah, I think that's really where those two, the last two for us came about is we knew that we had to be innovative and, and that's how you go about uh, doing that. Yeah. So. Innovation really does tie directly back to courage and curiosity. That's very cool. So I, I guess you can, you can use a business coach. You can have somebody kind of driving the conversation. Um, I, I pulled this information up from, uh, some other resource about kind of if I was a business owner, how would I get this started? And uh, number one, they say, start with your own. And I think that's very applicable, even in what you were just saying, you know, when Mark came in, he said, Hey, these are some that we're going to have <laughs> regardless. Like these are, these are some that we're going to have, and then we're going to adapt uh, and add some more in there. So start with your own. Number two, get leadership's input, gather your leadership team and say, Hey, this is what we've got going on. This is what we need to do. Give me your input. Sounds like you guys did that exact same thing. Number three is ask your team. You know, what is, uh, what are what are the values that we hold true in our organization? And I know when we started going through this process, we were talking to our team and there were a lot of things that people would say, well, that's the LockDoc way or that's the way we do it at LockDoc, but there was not a whole lot of definition behind it. So, but getting that feedback and getting that understanding and then figuring out a way to put a definition around it. Number four, meet again. Once you kind of co get those together, meet again, present them. Hey, is this actually going to work or is this going to happen? It sounds like both of you guys already described that this was a process that you went through. And then lastly, make them stick. So maybe that story form like Will has 
uh, at Provincia that you can easily work with those and they and they stick out to you and they stick with you and they're easily shareable. Or maybe there's signage or maybe it's part of your weekly routine or maybe there are badges that you're handing out or some type of, uh, you know, some positive reinforcement around them that you're using. But that's really kind of the five-step process to start working on core values. And I can tell you from our experience, and I'll go through that, that list again. Number one, start with your own. Have some kind of internal processing. What, what do I believe to be true? What are the values that I hold uh, important for me as, as a business leader or a business owner? Number two, get leadership input. Number three, ask your team. Four, meet again about it. And then number five, make it stick. Um, but I can tell you, we, since we implemented them in our organization, it has revolutionized the way that our team works together. It changed, it changed the unity in our team. It's, it, it's allowed us to grow at a more exponential rate because there's no question about what our values are as an organization. Uh, it sounds like it's been the same for everybody else. Once It seems, and I, I'll, get so, I, I get, I'll get some of your response to this, a lot of times when you have this conversation, it seems so simple. Okay, their core values, you put them on a po poster board, you put them on a piece of paper. It's just simple. It's just words. But once it's actually livable, all right, and you're actually utilizing them and applying them, then it just gets a lot of the confusion out of the way and allows you to, I guess, run faster or move in a better direction because you actually have a set of plans that you're working off of. What are, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Travis? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, the way to really make it stick is through the storytelling, I think. And that's what I've seen in our town halls. That's when the organization really can start to um, grasp the core values when they see the stories that, um, that are examples. And especially, you know, we've part of our process here that we see happen a lot is young guys will go from the warehouse into the sales department. Mm -hmm. And they start by moving to the will call counter, which is kind of like throwing them to the wolves a little bit. You know, there's the locksmiths get to come in and just chew them up all the time, you know. So we, uh, when we talk about um, courage, you know, that was one of the stories that was recently told. We talked about a young guy that went from the warehouse to the will call counter and just how well he's been able to adapt and how much he's taken on um, in, in his own time, really trying to learn the industry and trying to learn, you know, whatever, what all the locksmiths are talking about on a daily basis. Um, so when we tell those, it's the storytelling really is what it comes down to. When we tell those stories, we, that's when I see it stick with people. Very cool. Will, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so obviously the storytelling is a big part of it for us. I think another really unique way to make it stick and build it into the, the fabric of the culture is to incentivize by the core values. And so if people are um, exemplifying those values in the day-to-day -day actions, call them out and make that very forward facing to the rest of the company so that mm -hmm. everyone else can see someone being praised and being rewarded for living those core values without anybody else looking or without being asked to do so. Um, it's a great sort of positive reinforcement reminder to, to do it that way. So if you've got somebody who is, for example, in our organization, uh, if there are just constantly at the end of the day or the end of the week, if rather than going back to the shop or going home, if they first call the other technicians and find out, hey, I'm in the Nashville area, who else is in Nashville that needs help? Mm -hmm. If you've got somebody doing that day in and day out, yeah, they're going to be rewarded within our organization. Yeah. They're going to get um, at, at our, our quarterly meetings that we do now, they will be um, recognized for it. They will be rewarded. You know, I don't know exactly if there's monetary rewards or a gift card here or there, or a paid day off or whatever it is. Who knows? I mean, it could be mm -hmm. simple stuff, right? Like, Everybody is. Everybody sees the value of a reward differently, but to be incentivized and rewarded based on the core values will make it stick as well. Most definitely. Well, there's some some I guess some action items for us. I mean, uh, if you don't have core values, now I'd be interested in the comments. Uh, if you have them, if you have them documented, if it's something that you're sharing on a regular basis. If not, um, there's no better time than now to start. Right. 
Uh, and, and one of the things that I, some of the advice that I'd gotten through these processes is, um, uh, is progress over perfection. Just go ahead and get something there. If you have to go back and adjust them and tweak them, that's fine. But get something going, get something started, um, and to start to, sh to share and communicate what that message is, what those values are for your organization. Um, I want to be mindful of our time. We're, we're pushing on uh, close to an hour. It's been very insightful conversation. Hopefully it helps uh, some people that are working through this right now or thinking about it, or maybe they're on the fence. Do these things even matter? I think you have three really interesting stories here that can say they most definitely do. They definitely change the trajectory of the organization and they change the, the way that the communication of the organization happens um, and, and really kind of give some stability to what the future looks like. So thank you, Travis. Thank you, Will, for your time today. Um, it's good to chat with you all again. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chad and Will. Thanks for being here. All right. We appreciate Absolutely. I appreciate you guys including me. It was a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And, uh, All right, take care, guys. We, we appreciate HL Flake obviously supporting this and uh, promoting it and promoting positive conversation for the locksmith community and the secure, security professionals. So thank you very much to HL Flake for helping to promote another security professionals business roundtable. We'll see you next Thursday. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Come safely.